uh, in season. Our Mondays are weird because our JV games are on Monday, uh, but we we basically just do a lot of walkthroughs, talking on Mondays, and we usually play games. Play games like play tag, play uh, capture the flag, do other stuff just to get some good conditioning in. We also do some speed work and stuff on Monday, but that's, that's Monday. But here's our Tuesday practice. Tuesday practice, again, everything's up tempo. You can see this is, this is a uh, defensive emphasis. We're going to go up here. We're going to do um, a team warm up, team pursuit. Uh, we have our team talk. This is where we do our character ed stuff. Again, it's right for team pursuit, so they're stuck in the air anyway. They get a break. Then we do our offensive breakdown. And we have everybody invited up doing stuff. We go to kick return. And then we finish with, with uh, the, the other stuff. Um, the, if you look at that, the, the rest of that time is defensive time, and I just didn't want to put it on there to save time. Wednesday is our offensive day. Um, this, is, this has changed over the last two years. I just didn't want to change the slide because it was weird to make the slide work. What we do now is we actually take 12 minutes, uh, 12 minutes actually before team pursuit to do our team talk. And our team talk is, is an extended breakout session with, their, with different coaches. Like I said, we get all the, all the coaches there on Wednesday, and every coach has a group except I do, and they have more in-depth discussions about our theme for the week. Character and discussion, whether it be honesty, trustworthy, um, being respectful, things like that. And I just have some talking points for them that they talk about. And again, we talk about why it's important in life, why it's important in relationships, why it's important in football. Uh, that 12 minute segment, we're on the clock. We take, we take practice time for that. It's important. We really believe in that. And I think it helps, I think it helps our kids be better people, most importantly. But it also helps us be a better football team because our kids learn to to know each other and not just have the, the false mass and the bravado that goes along with sports a lot of times. But you can see we break it, break down, hit the stuff we need to. Um, the coaches will tell you that when I run a drill session, they do it a lot faster than when the assistant coaches do. And they just, they just will say too, we don't know how you call the plays that fast. It's just they're really polite guys and they don't want to yell, yell all the time. Where inside run, Line up and run the ball. Line up and run the ball. And this is against. This is against. Um, this is. Yeah, it's against scouts. It's not bud. It's not live. It's it's a lot of dummy work too. Yes, our receivers. Hey, they run a lot. In fact, week six or seven, um, I have them write my plans to ease off on the route running for our receivers, or their legs will be dead, because they do so much running between pre-practice, team pursuit, and then during that time, and. Our, our linemen, by the way, and you guys can tell this to your team too, I coached O-line for a lot of years. And as offensive linemen, we know that all the receivers and backs do is drink all the water. Because when you go to the water, it's all gone. The receivers and backs just drink. So um, I know now why the receivers and backs drink all that water, so they're working hard. But but uh, we still tell our receivers and backs to not drink all the water, even though there's like this big one turning or something. Yeah, it's an uh, inside joke kind of team like this. Um, there's a typical practice script for the week. Um, these are our formations. Bunch left, deuce, diamond, hot left, hot right, over, um, hurt, do some power eye stuff still. Those are our formations. What happens is on a Sunday or Saturday after I've watched all the film, I go through and decide what things we're going to do. I, my first two years we did this, I asked my assistant, offensive assistants, hey guys, what else should we do? What do you see it? And they didn't say anything. And I'd say, I think we can really have success with this. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's what we were thinking too. So we just save everybody time, and I just do this. And I, uh, this is our game plan for the week. And this is the wristband code for it. And um, that, like I said, I have my system of doing that. The great thing about our wristbands is we can change them every, every week. I mean, we change them every week because even though it would take a lot of time and resources to crack the code, we have teams that are legal to do that. But we, uh, so we, we change them every week. Um, we try to get off of them as quick as we can to hand signals, but it takes people time, time to learn that. And like I said before, if you look at some of this stuff, it's, it's just different in play calls. And everything has, everything has signals for it too. And here, I'll show you, I'll show you this right here. We have, uh, you see our bird concept? 
Can anybody guess what the signal for burger is? So conference teams and teams we see on that don't, don't steal this on us. I know you'll be called out. You know what a burger concept is? That's it. And it, it, they, the burger, 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 or, I mean, this year they call it Ruben. I, I, I realize it's a sandwich and all, but that's what they want to do with it. Um, so yeah, we have simple signals we want to take in. Uh, this is our wristband, this is what it looks like. Receivers, I should say, skilled guys have different wristbands than the whole linemen. The whole linemen have position specific wristbands. The, the skilled guys all have the same one. The linemen, the formation doesn't matter, so they don't have the formation on here at all. They just have plays. But it's like playing, it's like playing Battleship or using Excel or Google Sheets, whatever. Um, I'll call, I'll call 11, and 11 is 34 dive rip. Right here is their blocking responsibility. And what can happen is we can change. This is a great thing for me. Is a lot of times when I was younger, I'd think, how can I get my lineman to do this? Well, how do I have to take that to this? Now I can just, at our Monday meeting, say, hey, guys, we're going to block this one different. I'll show them the wristband, and it'll have a different thing there. So just be aware, this is going to be different when we call that, that plate. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And they think they're really getting secret and stuff about it. It's, it's secret code. But I can also say 12 is the exact same plate. 11 and 12 is the same plate. And again, formation doesn't matter because the line are going to go to the same spots unless we go heavy or, or weak. But that's that's just how, how it works. But er, this is the right this is the right tackles wristband. The kids every year, the, the new kids are always like, how do you know which one's which? Because it says where the wristband. This is the right tackle. The left tackle is LT, right guard, whatever center. But um, these also these also are changes in our splits. If they see orange, they're supposed to widen a step. If they see yellow they're supposed to reduce a step. If it's green, it's on quick keys. If it's black, it's on two or a long keys. And it, it changes that all up like that. And it's, uh, it's done like that. And again, we can change this week to week. So like, if you look and say, oh, 13 or 14 is always on two. No, this week it's on two, but it's not. And then people have asked before too, you know, coach, what happens if you want to call a play that's not in your play for this week? Now, if there are a lot of plays for this week, um, then I just call the play. Literally say, trips right, X stop. And then we run trips right, X stop. It's, it's not, and, and again, we're trying to go as fast as we can to increase that conflict. Um, again, this works for me, but here's the thing. This doesn't work for my JV offensive play caller, and it doesn't work for my freshman offensive play caller. They, they, they don't know how I can call that stuff. And I have, a, I have a play sheet that has the codes on there. Because again, you have to get the information there as, as quickly as you can. How can you get from here to the players? And it's, uh, if you want this stuff, I'll send it to you. There's I email and stuff on there. If you ever have any other questions too, uh, you know, if you have questions now, I'll be happy to answer them. Like I said, I was trying to go fast so we could get you to lunch. But uh, it's, it, it really, the kids like it, we like it. Um, I will say, if you're someone that goes up tempo, it's like a drug addiction. And what I mean by that is you're always chasing the high because you can never go fast enough. You gotta go faster, you gotta find a way to go faster. It's gotta be faster. And this year, and here's the thing too, if you're not very good, you're gonna get blown out badly if you're an up tempo team. And this year, this year we lost level four to Amherst, and you know, they were a good football team. They actually had running clock on us, and that's the first time in a very long time we had running clock. And I realized on reflection, and, and actually during that game, I realized it too, that if we would have slowed it down, it, it, they wouldn't have had running clock on us. They were, not thinking they were, them, they were good. They weren't, they weren't 35 points better than us. They were, they were maybe two touchdowns better than us. I think five times out of 10, um, we probably could game the other way, but it just didn't that night for us. But again, when you're, when momentum's falling away from you and you're, you're trying to go fast and suddenly you're punting from your own end zone after burning 30 seconds off the clock, bad things happen. So that's something as coaches we talk about and we're trying to uh, find a better way to do that. Uh, any questions, guys? What's your team time look like? 
where you have to fund? The, like when we're going uh, against the defense and they tackle or yep. touch? Um, we do a lot against bags. We, we do a lot. We do a lot against bags. We do a lot against gear. Um, in fact, if you ask the rest of the offensive staff, well, <coughs> guys, I, I, I brush over this. Our, we do swing and get extra points. We have we rugby punt. We have a really good kick return. I wish we could come up with something more exotic on kick, kick off, just because we want to make teams prepare for a lot of things. And you know, we're all, we all tend to copy each other, so I don't like when other teams in our conference try and do things like we do it, because then that gives other teams in the conference more time to practice that, so then we feel like we'll change it. No. Anyway, um, to answer your question, defensively, it looks very different than offensively. Offensively, we do a lot against airs. Okay. We do a lot against bags. We'll do a lot where it's not contact. We'll say we'll say run, run the touch. Where I'll tell the defense, I'll tell the, the coaches run the scout defense to give us a different look every play. So give us a three-three stack. Give us a four-two five. Give us a give us a three-four. Give us a every play. And we don't and I don't script it. I want them to try and figure out the best way to stop us. And I'll say I'll say one-time chase motion, one-time roll of motion. One time, don't even move. One time, you'll do this. So, and they get to just be as creative as they want. They get all excited when they stop us. So we will have team offensive sessions where we look terrible because they've guessed and gotten into really bad looks for us. But it helps us get better because we, we talk about it and how to come out of that. For right. defense, we script everything. We know exactly what's going to be run by scout team during defensive time. And how it's going to work. Any other questions? Do you do a or Jamie John, say for every week, change it every week? No, it's always the same. Always the same. Yep, once, once we establish what it is, it's, it's going to go. And the thing is, um, you know, if you want to go through our film and try and guess which four we're running like that, by all means, go do it. Because then you got got to teach your players that, you got to figure that stuff out. But it's, it, we, we try to go as fast as we can. In fact, this last year, we, we didn't run Jimmy John's as much as we have in previous years because we just got to be very fast as much. We, were, we couldn't go faster than what we were doing. It, I shouldn't say other than what the officials were going to at because the officials would slow us down so much. <laughs> and I, and I, guys, I, I'm currently high school principal at our school, and I'm also, I was AD the last, the last four years, and I know this, that officials don't want to work our games. They don't want to work our games because they have to run a lot. And they're going to get chewed out by us for going so slow. In fact, I was told by one crew that I forced one of their guys, the best official ever in the state, to retire. <laughs> and I, I, you guys can thank me later. But I'm sure that, uh, <laughs> I get, you know, they're doing their job. It's not like a, it's not like a, a constant battle. But again, if you have questions, call me. Stop by. I love talking football. Hope it helps.